In this video, I want to have a look at limits to infinity. So some problems are going to ask us to consider the behaviour of a function as x becomes really, really large in either a negative or a positive direction. So what that means is that we're going to look at the limit as x approaches either minus infinity, so really, really big negative numbers, or positive infinity, so really, really big positive numbers. So let's have a look at an example. So our first example asks us to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x. So if it doesn't have a plus or a minus there, then we're just assuming it's positive infinity. So if we've got this function 3 times x, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so closer and closer moving up towards infinity, then that 3 times x is going to get larger and larger and larger as well. And there's no bound to that. There's no place where it's going to start plateauing. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger forever. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x will be equal to infinity because it just keeps getting bigger. If we think about what that looks like, um, what that function actually looks like if we graph it, if we've got our x and our y axes, 3x is just a straight line with gradient 3. So going through your origin, it looks something like this. So as our x increases, moves towards infinity, then that line's just going to keep going up and up forever. So the limit as x approaches infinity, like we said, is just infinity because there is no limit. There's no bounds to that. The other way we can think about that is sort of looking at it as substituting in. So we could look at it as 3 times infinity, which would just give us infinity. But we have to be really careful like that because infinity isn't a number, so we can't treat it like one. So there's a few things we have to watch out for. So our next one, we've got the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the power of 4 all, all over x cubed minus 3x. Now, if we think about substituting in infinity here, we'd end up with 2 times infinity to the power of 4 over infinity cubed minus 3 times infinity, which kind of just gives us infinity over infinity, which doesn't make any sense at all. Infinity divided by infinity, that doesn't work. Like I said, it's not like a number if you had something like 3 over 3, well, that would simplify to 1. But because infinity is not a number, we can't do that. It doesn't work the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this first equation, that first function, sorry, so that it makes sense. So what we're going to do to help us get around this infinity over infinity problem is we're going to consider the function 1 over x. So that function looks like this. It's a hyperbola. And if we look at the limit as x approaches infinity, so as x approaches infinity, we can see that our graph, our function, is getting closer and closer to zero. So we'll write that formally as the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 on x is zero. So we can use that result to help us evaluate other limits like the one we looked at just before. And to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to divide every single term by the highest power in the denominator. So we'll have a look at a few examples of that. So our first example says the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared minus 7x all over 4x squared plus 2. So if we were to straightforward substitute that infinity in, we'd end up with that infinity over infinity problem. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to look at our x's. The highest power of x in the denominator is that x squared. So we're going to divide every single term in this function by x squared. So what that's going to mean, we're still going to have our limit there. So the limit as x approaches infinity of, and now we're going to have fractions in fractions all over the place. So x squared divided by x squared will just give us 1. Actually, let's write this out properly. So we'll write it as x squared, um, x squared over x squared minus 7 over x squared over, and then we're dividing each thing down the bottom. So we've got 4 x squared over x squared plus 2 over x squared. So simplifying that down, our x squareds and our x squared, that would just become a 1. Um, that was a 7x, not just a 7. Whoops. Um, so dividing through an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. And our x squared simplify down again. So making that all look a little bit neater, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus 7 over x 
over 4 plus 2 over x squared. Now we know, looking back at that result we had a moment ago, that the limit as x approaches infinity of this bit is 0. And that works the same. Even though this is a squared on the bottom, it still applies that same limit. So this bit approaches 0 as well. So as x approaches infinity, these two sections both go to 0. So what that means that we're left with is that 1 over 4. So the limit as x approaches infinity of this whole function is 1 quarter. So just to finish off, I want to jump back to this example that we got stuck on before. So we've got the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the power of 4 over x cubed minus 3x. So if we go through and divide everything by the highest power in the denominator, that's our x cubed. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the 4 over x cubed all over x cubed over x cubed minus 3x over x cubed. And simplifying all that down, um, x cubed and x to the power of 4 will just leave us with an x in the numerator. x cubed and x cubed, that whole thing will just give us a 1. And an x in the numerator and an x in the bottom denominator will leave us with an x squared. So making that a little bit neater, we'll have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over 1 minus 3 over x squared. So again, we know that this bit that has the x in the denominator, as x approaches infinity, this whole bit is going to turn into a 0. But this x up the top, we can still substitute that infinity in. So what that's going to give us is 2 times infinity in the numerator. And in the denominator, we'll just have that 1 or 1 minus 0, because we know this bit approaches 0. So we're left with 2 times infinity, which is just infinity. So if the limit as x approaches 0 is infinity, we can also write the limit does not exist, or DNE, because there is no limit to that. So that's a quick look at limits to infinity.